Hello app developers, this is Prof Chi, and welcome back to the next step in our journey to learn to program using Swift for iOS development. So we're working on our You Are Awesome app, and you are awesome because you're learning to build apps. But unfortunately, our app isn't all that awesome. It just has a single statement inside of a label. It doesn't really do anything. So what we're going to do is learn how to get our apps to actively do something. We're going to add a button that says show message. When you click it, it's going to say you are awesome. And even though this is pretty basic, it's going to give us a chance to learn about some important concepts like IB outlets, IB actions, and the view did load function. We'll also take a little detour in this video and learn the very important skill of how to respond to an app crash and find incorrect errors. And learning just a few techniques early in your career can be a huge time and frustration saver. So buckle up and let's get ready to increase those app building skills. And let's pick up where we last left off. So if you're not in Xcode already, I'm going to double click on my You Are Awesome folder. I'm going to double click You Are Awesome dot Xcode proj to load my project in Xcode and we're ready to go. And in the project navigator, I'm going to click on main storyboard. I'm laying out my project in an iPhone SE. I'll click view as to toggle and hide the different device dimensions. I'm also going to click on my label that says you are awesome so that I can see all of the different attributes. Make sure that your inspector pane is showing so you can click in the upper right hand corner if it's not showing and make sure that you've clicked on the attributes inspector. That's this downward pointing arrow. Just as a quick demo, we want our app to work like this. We want it to start off with nothing in this label. But when we click on a show message button that we're about to add, we want that label to change to you are awesome. Now the label currently has you are awesome as its text attribute, but I bet you you know how to get rid of you are awesome in the label. Why don't we pause here? You can think through how you might change that attribute and then unpause and we'll see if you got it right. Pause and resume. Changing the text attribute is super simple. We've done this before. Just double click inside of the label, press the delete key and we've made our change. And if I click anywhere outside the label, it accepts the change. Now we can also do this from within the attributes inspector. So I'm going to do a command Z to undo what I've just done. The you are awesome text is back in the label. And in the attributes inspector, we can go up here, highlight you are awesome, which is right underneath where it says text plane backspace over that. We've got to press enter this time, but that also gets rid of it. So just two different ways to accomplish the same task. Now we're going to add this button that says show message right underneath our empty label. Now, even though we haven't done this in a video, I bet you can figure out how to do it. Remember how we added a label to the user interface. We went up to the library, we found label and dragged it over onto the canvas. And then we changed the text attribute for the label. Well, I bet you can find a button in the library, drag that over and figure out how to change the title attribute for the button. So once you pause here, give it a shot and unpause. Ready? Pause. And resume. Now let's show the object library by clicking on the library button. That's this plus button in the collection of icons in the upper right hand corner. The library window will appear and we actually see button right up top, right underneath label. Now there are a lot of objects in the object library. So if you wanted to filter these down, you could actually type into the search box up here. It's called the object filter and whatever text you type in will narrow down what's showing in the library. For example, if I type in just a B, well, these are all the objects that have a B somewhere in their name. If I add a U to that, well, we see here are a bunch of things that actually have button in them. And we want to make sure that we want button, not bar button item. So I'm just going to click on button and drag it onto the canvas. And Xcode offers these layout lines that are really helpful. So this one line that goes vertically, it shows me that I've got the button in good horizontal alignment. And this other horizontal line says, hey, there's a decent amount of white space in between the button I'm about to drop if I drop it here and the label above it. So I'm going to let go, drop the button, and I've just added a second object to my view controller. Nice. So how do we change the button title? Same way we change the text inside of a label. First, I'm going to double click right on where it says button in this button. I'm going to type show message over the top of it, press enter, and we just change the title. Now, in the same way that the label had a text attribute in the attribute inspector, the button has a title attribute in the attribute inspector. So I'm going to do a command Z to undo first. So we go back to it just saying button. I'm going to find button right underneath title. I'm going to type show message over it and press enter. Perfect. Now, if we try this out in the simulator, our button doesn't have any logic behind it, so it doesn't do anything. But let's run this in the simulator just to see how things look. I'm going to select iPhone SE from the scheme because it was designing on an iPhone SE. And then I'll click this play button to build and run. Progress bar says it's building the app. I get a build succeed message, waiting for the iPhone, launching the app, running, and here we go. Now, if we click on the button, it doesn't do anything. So let's put some logic behind it. And for that, we're going to have to write a little bit of Swift code. Now, we're going to return to Xcode, but a little pro tip. Don't quit the simulator. Just go back into Xcode. I'm going to click on the stop button to stop the simulator. But if you keep the simulator up in the background, when you build and run again, it'll be a little bit faster. So we've used main storyboard to lay out our user interface, but it's pretty much just painting a picture. What we need to do is to create some logic that's attached to the objects in the main storyboard. 
And we're going to write that logic in this viewcontroller.swift file. So the viewcontroller is on the main storyboard, and then viewcontroller.swift has the code to control that view controller. Now I'm first going to hop over to the main storyboard and set it up the way I want it to look. Now, if your document outline isn't showing on your canvas, click on this icon in the lower left-hand corner of the canvas to show the doc outline. I'm also gonna hide my attributes inspector to give me some more room. And to connect the objects on my main storyboard to this viewcontroller.swift file, I want these two files to show side by side. Now, first I'm gonna click on viewcontroller.swift. And when files show side by side, that's referred to as the assistant editor in Xcode. You'll wanna remember this side by side shortcut to quickly get into the assistant editor mode. Click the first file that you want, hold down the Option key, and then click the second file. So I'm going to click first on viewcontroller.swift, hold down the Option key, click Main Storyboard. I see I'm in this assistant editor. The two files are side by side, and I've got exactly the two files that I want. So remember, for the side by side assistant editor view, click the first file, hold down the Option key, click the second file. And for some reason, it looks like my document outline is thinned out. So I'm just going to click on this line here, separating the outline from the canvas, drag it over, and that'll make this larger. I'm also going to click on the label. Now, one thing that we're going to want to do in our code is we are going to want to change the text attribute inside of this label that I've clicked on. Now, unfortunately, our code at this point does not even know that this label exists. So what we need to do is we need to plug the label into the code. What we're going to do is we're going to create something called an IB outlet or an interface builder outlet. And what that does is it allows this item on the interface builder, in this case, it's going to be a label to plug in and be powered by the code in viewcontroller.swift. So outlet's a good name. Just like you take an appliance and plug it into electricity, we're gonna take an interface object, plug it in to be powered by our Swift code using an IB outlet. Let's do it. So to wire up our object to an IB outlet, so to speak, what we wanna do is we wanna control click on the object. So we wanna wire up our label. So we're gonna hold down the control key, click on the label. And while we're holding down the control key, we wanna drag over onto our Swift code. Now we'll see this little rubber band line will show up and we want to release that in between where it says class and the first function. So any place in this white space after the word class and just before we hit this override func. Then just let go of the mouse and we'll see a bunch of different options for setting up our outlet. We don't need to touch connection because we want this to be an outlet. Always check the type because it's possible that you might drag over the wrong element like the view behind the label, but this says UI label, which means user interface label. It just verifies that we're making the connection from the label, so that's great. Now names in Swift need to be one word, and we could name this pretty much anything. We could call it Jennifer or Label McLabel Face, but we're going to use a standard Swift convention. It's called lower camel case, and names in lower camel case can contain multiple words, but there are no spaces in between. Begin the name with a lowercase letter, but any additional word should start with an uppercase letter. So we're going to name this outlet message label, and we're going to capitalize the L that starts the word label. Now the other part of the convention is when you're naming outlets, the last part of the name should be the type of outlet that it is. So it's called message label because this is an outlet of type label. So message is a good name because this is going to hold a message and label is the type of outlet that it is. Lowercase m, capital L, label. Lower camel case. Why is it called lower camel case? Well, I guess because the capital letters look like the humps of a camel. And there is an upper camel case. We'll talk about when to use that in a future lesson. Now, when we click on connect, Xcode is going to write a line of code for us. It's going to say IB outlet. All our outlets are going to have the word weak in here. You can ignore that for now. Var means this is a variable. That means we can vary the contents of this thing that we just named. Message label is the name. And then after this colon, it says UI label. That's just the type of the object it is. It's a user interface object called label. And we'll ignore that exclamation point. Xcode knows what it's doing. So take note of two other things that have happened since Xcode wrote this IB outlet line for us. Since Xcode added this line, you see that there's a blue line over here on the left-hand side. And Xcode will indicate any changes that you make in a Swift file since your last commit with these blue lines. It's a good indicator as to what you've changed, and it's also a good reminder that, hey, you've made a lot of changes, you might want to commit and save your work. The second thing that we see is next to the IB outlet, we've got a circle with a solid circle inside of it. Now watch what happens over here in Interface Builder when you move your cursor on top of that double circle. We see that it highlights the message that it's connected to. So this is a great way to be able to see when items are side by side that you've got an accurate connection. Now just a bit of a warning, sometimes Xcode takes some time to fill in the circle and show that there's a connection that's been made. But if you get in the assistant editor and you put these items side by side and you move your cursor over the circle, you should see the connection show up on the storyboard. Also, if you don't see the connection showing up on the storyboard when they're side by side in the assistant editor, that's an indication that you've got a broken connection. And we're actually 
going to see an example of that in just a bit. And now it's also time for a major warning. Being aware of this will save developers hours of confusion and heartache. You should never, repeat, never try to rename an IB outlet by highlighting the name in your Swift code and retyping to replace that name. This will cause a spectacular and most unfriendly crash when your app starts running. Instead, you're gonna use a technique I'll demonstrate called refactor and rename. Follow along with me. We're gonna deliberately create an error. You're gonna see what happens so that you can recognize this if you encounter it in the future and you'll know how to correct it. So let's imagine that I made a special spelling error here, which is not a mental leap because I am a terrible speller. But let's imagine I typed in message label as L-E at the end instead of E-L. And yes, we're creating the misspelling instead of correcting the misspelling, but this is just for demo purposes. Now we see message label as our variable up top, but what we don't see is behind the scenes, Xcode is keeping track of a connection between the variable and the object on our interface builder, which is our label. Now a broken connection exists because we didn't change that unseen connection. This unseen connection is connected to message label spelled E-L at the end. And since that doesn't exist, we've got a broken connection and our app is actually gonna crash. I'll show you how to find that connection in just a bit. But first, let's click on the play button and create this spectacular and confusing crash. Now Xcode doesn't identify this error up front, so we refer to this as a runtime error. And I'm speeding up the video so you don't have to wait for the app to build, but here we go and... Oh, look at this spectacular crash. This looks so gnarly. First, I'm gonna click back on Xcode and we see over here on the rightmost pane, we no longer see our main storyboard. We see this file called appdelegate.swift. Now appdelegate.swift exists in our project, but we didn't even touch that file. And we're seeing an error show up in line 12 in that file, but it doesn't tell us anything about that error. Now, if you're not in assistant editor mode, when you have a crash like this, you're just gonna see the appdelegate.swift file. I'm gonna click on the X to get rid of viewcontroller.swift. This is what you're going to see, not friendly at all. So unfortunately, one of the most common errors for new iOS programmers is also one of the least friendly and most confusing. Another thing that's confusing, if you look over in the navigators pane, we are no longer in the project navigator. If you hover your cursor over what's highlighted is the debug navigator. And let's go down here in the lower right hand corner in the debug area and we see a bunch of output where most of this isn't useful at all to the new developer. Now scroll up to the top of the debug area, past all of these numbers, just past this area that says first throw call stack. And I'm gonna show you how you can put on your deer stalker hat and Sherlock out this problem. Now most of this is meaningless, but if you read this one phrase here, it says this class is not key value coding compliant for the key message label. Aha, look at how that message label is spelled. It's spelled the old way, not the new way. So this gives us a heads up. Hey, message label spelled this way is the problem here. So I'm gonna go up to my navigators. I'm gonna get out of the debug navigator, click on the project navigator, and I'm gonna show my two files side by side. So I'm gonna click on viewcontroller.swift and remember how we get into assistant editor, option click on main storyboard. And I'm gonna scroll up here to my view controller and I'm gonna right click on this yellow ball that's highlighted as view controller. Now here's our sleuthy clue. And we can see it because we've got a yield sign here. Now it actually shouldn't be a yield sign, it should be a stop sign because it stopped our code in its tracks and crashed. But if we see under outlets, it says message label spelled E-L. Over here, we see we named the label message label L-E. How do we fix the problem? Notice that we've got a little circle inside of this connection here. But if I click on this X mark, the connection goes away. And also notice that our once filled in circle to the left of our IB outlet is now empty. That's a signal that this line is not connected to anything on the storyboard. Now I'm also gonna show you one other technique for detecting and solving problems like this. And trust me, this is gonna be very useful as you continue to build apps. So first let's close this black dialog box that shows the connections by clicking in the X in the upper left-hand corner. And while I'm over here in the main storyboard, I'm gonna do a Command Z to undo the fix that I just did. And if I right click on this circle in the view controller, bring up the connections editor, I can see that broken connection error is back. So we verified we put the error back, click in the left corner to close this dialog box. And now I'm gonna show you how you can sleuth out an error like this using the super useful find navigator in Xcode. Now, just a reminder, down here in the debug area, what we did was we scrolled up past all of these numbers, just above where it says first throw call stack with these three stars, and we identified that message label spelled this way was the source of our error. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna double click on message label so I can do a command C to copy of this spelling, and I'm gonna search for message label spelled this way in my project, and that'll find the source of the error. Now I'm gonna to go to the upper left-hand corner where I can find this very Sherlocky looking magnifying glass. Notice the tool tip, it brings up the fine navigator. I'm gonna paste in the spelling of message label that caused the error. And when I press enter, this searches through my whole project here and I see the result, it found message label spelled this way on the main storyboard. 
So if I double click on message label, this brings up the main storyboard and it also opens the utilities area and highlights what's called the connections inspector over on the right. Notice we get the yield sign again. Yield means we have a broken connection. It should be stopped because it stopped our program. I'm gonna click on the X to get rid of this connection. And now I'm gonna go ahead and reestablish my connection. So over here in viewcontroller.swift, I'm gonna highlight my line with the IB outlet. I'm gonna backspace to get rid of it. I'm gonna control drag from my label back over to that space right underneath class, let go. I'm gonna type in message label and I'm not gonna spell it wrong this time again. I'm gonna spell it the right way. Click connect and this creates a valid and connected IB outlet. Over here, I have a proper connection. I don't have a yield sign. You can also right click on the circle in the view controller doc. No yield sign there either. I fixed all my problems. Now, if you wanna verify this, you can hide your inspectors, stop execution, go ahead and build and run. I'm gonna get back into my project navigator and we no longer have our glorious crash. Now our app still doesn't do anything, so now back to our regularly scheduled program. Now we did take a detour to learn about finding and fixing bugs and it took some time, but learning this early on can really save students a lot of time and confusion. So I'll click this X in the upper left-hand corner of the main storyboard, get out of assistant mode, click back on viewcontroller.swift, and we're ready to resume coding. Now, one other super quick tip. Sometimes you do want to go ahead and just simply rename something that you've created in Xcode. So if we want to change the name of message label, let's imagine we wanted to call it awesome label. Well, to do this, just double click the name to highlight it, right click, and then select refactor rename. Now notice what happens. Xcode shows us this collapsed view that identifies every single place where message label is mentioned in our project. So now if we type over message label in this first highlighted box, what this does is not only changes it in our viewcontroller.swift file, but this is also changing the outlet connection. So when I press enter here, we've just changed things to awesome label. This is the way to rename an IB outlet in Xcode. I'm gonna go back though to what I had before. So I'm just gonna double click on awesome label, right click, select refactor, rename, and replace awesome label with message label. Again, remember, you wanna rename something? Double click, refactor, rename, it'll avoid heartache. And now back to building our app. Let's get back to assistant editor mode by clicking on viewcontroller.swift, holding down option, clicking main storyboard. I'll click and drag the side of the document outline to expand it. Now we have a second user interface element here. That's the button. Now we want this button to perform an action when clicked. So we're gonna create something called an IB action. It's a connection from the interface builder to our code. And we wire up an IB action connection the same way we do an IB outlet. We're gonna click on this button that says show message, hold down the control key, drag over, and we wanna position this instead of at the top of our class, we want it to go at the end of our class. The convention is to put the IB actions at the end of your code. So outside of any function and just before the last curly brace. So we'll let go here and just like with IB outlets, we have a bunch of choices to create our IB action. We could keep the type as any, but it's good practice to pull down in here and select whatever type the object is. So since it's a UI button, this allows us to verify, hey, we dragged over from the right element. So select UI button. We're not gonna change the event for the button, but why don't we click on this and take a look at the option. We can see that it selects touch up inside. And you might not have noticed this before, but when you work on an iPhone next time, watch how the buttons work. If you touch a button, it doesn't immediately fire. It'll only fire when you lift your finger off. That's referring to as a touch up. You lift your finger up inside of the button. So we'll leave that as it is. Ignore argument sender. We're never gonna change that in any of the apps that we write, but we do need to give it a name. We will use lower camel case. And the convention is to use the verb that's being performed as the last word in your lower camel case action name. So message button press is a great name. Click on connect. And we see Xcode actually wrote a little block of code for us here. This is the IB action. And an IB action is actually a function, which is why we have the word func afterward. Now a function is just a chunk of code that could be reused or repeatedly executed. And in this case, this function is gonna be executed whenever anybody clicks on the message button. We have the name of the function. We have this thing that's called sender. We won't be touching that in our first few apps. But you see how we have a curly brace that starts and that ends this little block of indented code here? Well, any code that we put in between these curly braces will execute whenever we press the button that we connected to this function, which means our show message button. Now a little bit about these blocks of code. Up top we have this thing that says class view controller. Now in Swift you'll have lines of code that are wrapped between curly braces and sometimes you'll want to find the opposite pair for a curly brace. Well if you hold down the option key and move your cursor on top of one, Xcode will highlight the other one. So in this case I've moved my cursor on top of the curly brace that starts class. We see a blue line on the left hand side and the curly brace that ends the class. It's a nice check. 
So what's this view controller class? Well, when our app runs, iOS will take a look at this and say, okay, this is a blueprint for a view controller or for a screen on our app. And it uses this class or this blueprint to construct the object that you actually see on your iOS device when your program runs. And this has all the logic that we've written for our app so far. It has the IB outlet for the message label, and it's got this action to perform when a button is pressed, but it's not doing anything yet. Now, there are two other chunks of code that are both indented at the same level. This first one here is called view did load, and the second one is the IB action that we just created called message button pressed. All right, let's see how this message button pressed function works. I want you to click after this opening curly brace at the end of that first line that says message button pressed, press the return key to add a new line, and we're gonna put in a print statement. This will print a message out every time the button is pressed. So we're gonna start typing in the word print and watch what happens as we start typing. Xcode has this thing called code completion and it takes a look and finds everything that it knows about all of the commands that exist in Swift or in iOS programming that have P-R-I-N-T in them. So Xcode wants to write code for you. Now down below here, we see a description of this first statement that's highlighted in blue on my screen. Now, unfortunately, this isn't a particularly understandable description. and Some descriptions are better than others. Essentially what this description means is your program is gonna try to print out anything that's inside of the parentheses following print. Now you see that there's an F in green in the upper left-hand corner. That means this is a function. So this is a built-in function that's part of Swift. Now I could use the arrow keys to select any of these other statements for code completion. It would show me a description for them, but I want this first one. So I'm just gonna press enter. Xcode will fill out this function and it'll even include an open and close parenthesis. And it's highlighted this stuff in the middle that's just reminding me, hey, I can put in whatever items I want to print. Now we wanna print out a message. And the way that we do that in Swift is we have to enclose any text that we wanna print out in between double quotes. But if I type one double quote, Xcode will automatically type the closing double quote and it will position the cursor in between the quotes. So you wanna pay attention to how code completion works. In time, you're gonna be really used to working with Xcode. Xcode is like this buddy that's constantly with you that's trying to help you write better code faster. And okay, what message should we write? How about the message button was pressed exclamation point. Now here's the thing with print. It's not gonna print out into our message label. I'm gonna show you how to update the message label in just a bit. What the print function does is it will actually print a message out into what's called the console area. It's a portion of the debug pane. And one of the things that I like to do in order to be able to distinguish different messages is put an emoji in front. So why don't we click just before the T. The way that you can pull up the emoji characters in Mac OS is hold down the control key, the command key, and then press space at the same time. That brings up the character viewer Click on emoji in the left if it's not already clicked. I'm gonna go up here under search and I'm gonna type in cool because I think it's really cool that a message is gonna print out. We see the smiley face with sunglasses shows up. I'm just gonna click on that guy, drag it over, put it right at the front of my message and add a space. So since we're testing out our IB action, message button pressed, why don't we test out this other function here that's called view did load. Now what view did load does is it executes once when our app first runs and the view controller loads for the very first time. Now you see there's one line in here that says do any additional setup after loading the view. It's all in green, it starts with two slashes and those two slashes are comments in Swift. Anything after the two slashes on that line won't be executed. You'll use comments to document your code and it can be useful if you're programming and you wanna set aside code, but you don't wanna delete it yet. We actually don't need this line. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna highlight it and backspace over it. Now I wanna put a print message inside of view did load, but instead of typing in the print statement, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna highlight the print statement I already wrote, copy it, paste it into view did load, and I'll give it a different message in here. View did load has run, exclamation point. And let's change the emoji here. So we'll do control command space and oh, how about thumbs up? So I'll type in thumbs up, the thumbs up shows up. And this time instead of dragging over, I'm just gonna double click on the thumbs up and it types the thumbs up wherever the cursor is. Nice. Now I'm gonna click on the play button to build and run. And we'll see that our app is building and launching and attaching the build succeeded. And when we run our app, not only does the simulator open, but we also see that Xcode in the background has opened up the debug area. And this area on the right hand side of the debug area is called the console. This is where you'll find the output of your app's print statements. And we see we've got our thumbs up, view did load has run. How come? Well, because when the view loaded, that triggered the view did load function to run. And that's where we put in this print statement. Nice. What happens when we go up here and we click on the show message button? Boom, it says the message button was pressed. And again, boom, message button was pressed. Boom, message button was pressed. I'm gonna click back in Xcode. I'm gonna click on this bar above the debug area just to be able to drag it up and give myself some more room. Then I'm gonna command tab back over to Xcode. And every time I click on show message, I see cool smiley, the message button was pressed exclamation point. How come? Because this print statement is inside of our message button pressed function, which is wired as an IV action to the show message button. Splendid. Just a quick word about the debug pane. You've got the variables area on the left-hand side, console on the right-hand side. 
If you move your cursor to the lower right hand corner, we see these pane toggle icons just like the ones we've seen before. Click on the left that hides the variable area. Click on the right that will hide the console area. If yours isn't showing, now you know how to get it back. Time for another key concept, and this concept is event-driven programming. Now, the app that we just wrote did two things. It displayed the viewed load message, or it displayed the message button was pressed message. Both of these are triggered by events. There are two types of events that can occur in our app. One are system events, and these are triggered by iOS. An example of that would be, hey, the view just loaded. So whenever iOS sends a message to our app that says, the view just loaded, we can put some code in here to execute when the view loads. Now we're gonna learn about other system events that can occur and we'll write code for those as well. But Xcode gives you this view did load automatically because it's really common to have code that executes when the view loads. Now down here, we have a user action event. And the user action is when somebody clicks and lifts their finger off of a button. We're gonna see that there are lots of other ways to trigger events using other user interface elements, as well as different actions like taps and swipes. So hopefully that's more clear. Event-driven programming, we already worked with a system event, muted load, and that's a function provided as part of iOS, and a user action, which is message button pressed, which is an IB action that we wrote. Now let's get that message label updating. Back in Xcode, I'm gonna press the stop button up here to stop the simulator. And if I do that, instead of quitting the simulator, the simulator is still up in the background and it'll be faster the next time I build and run. I'm also gonna hide the debug area and I'm gonna get into the assistant editor mode, which means I'm gonna click on viewcontroller.swift, hold down the option key and click on main storyboard so that I get those two files side by side. I'll also show the utility pane with the attributes inspector and I'll click on my label so that I'm looking at the attributes for the label. Now we've created an IB outlet for message label. Message label is a variable, which means we can vary its contents, but there are lots of different attributes that make up a message label's contents. All of these different attributes are a separate piece of what makes up message label. And what we wanna change is the text attribute. So this is how we'll do this programmatically. Now we want the text in the message label to update to you are awesome when the show message button is pressed. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click inside of message button pressed, right after the print statement, I'm gonna press enter. Now, since I wanna update the message label, I'm gonna to start to type in message label on this line and watch what happens when I type in M-E-S-S. -S. Code completion pops up and it actually knows that message label exists. You can see to the left of message label, it says it's a UI label. And to the left of that, we see an icon in green, which has a V in there, which means it's a variable. We can vary or change the contents of message label. So I'm gonna press enter to accept message label. Xcode will type it in. Now, how do we access the specific attribute that we wanna to get to, specifically the text attribute? Well, what we're gonna do is we're gonna use something called dot notation. Now, objects like labels are really complicated. They have lots of attributes, but if we put a period after message label, follow that with the name of the attribute, well, then we can go in and work with that specific attribute. It might help to think of it this way. When we created the IB outlet called message label, this was like a holding place or a big box with all of the stuff inside that makes up a message label. Now inside of this big box of message label are all these little boxes that could contain text, text color, text alignment, the size of the label, font information, and lots more. Dot notation allows us to get inside of a box inside of the bigger box. Now in our code, we can refer to message label big box dot text little box, and we can say whatever we wanna make that equal to. Like a message fabulous, that's you. So right after message label, no space, I'm gonna type a dot or a period, and I can see all of these different attributes and some other things that are available as well. Another nice thing about code completion, even if you don't know the specific name of an attribute, and take a guess, type in some characters, you'll see a list of everything that has those characters. So if I wanna work with text, maybe it's called text, I'll type in T-E-X-T -E after the dot, and whoa, I see all of these attributes that have T-E-X-T -E in them. I see text, text color, text alignment. Text is highlighted and I see a few things in here. One is to the left of text, it says string. Now a string in programming terms is just a list of characters. So what this is, it means it's the type of this attribute, meaning this attribute is of the type that can hold a list of characters or that can hold a string. The V next to it means that it's a variable, which means we can change this text attribute. And up top, we've got a description telling us what the text attribute is, the current text that's displayed by the label. Perfect. Again, all of this reference is available to you, so you don't have to memorize the specifics of every single thing. Code completion in Xcode is your programming buddy, and I'm gonna press enter to accept text. By the way, you'll hear the phrase attributes, which is usually used when we're referring to the different components of an object in Interface Builder, or properties, which is often used when we're referring to the components of an object in code. You'll probably hear me use the term property and attribute interchangeably. So how do we get you are awesome in message label.txt? We just say equals, and then in between double quotes, 
you are awesome exclamation point. This equal sign acts as an assignment operator, so it takes whatever's on the right hand side and puts it in the object that's on the left hand side. Nice! Let's build and run and see how it looks. Click play. Build succeed. Simulator is up. Click on show message. You are awesome shows up. Fantastic. Look at that. Click that button a bunch more times. We can see down in the console that the print message is showing us that it's definitely executing that code. The reason why we're not seeing anything change is because we've already got you are awesome in there. We're just updating you are awesome with you are awesome so we don't see any change. Hey, what would happen if we updated message label inside of view did load? Well, why don't we go ahead and copy the message label dot text line down here for a message button pressed paste it into view did load and let's change the message. So instead of saying you are awesome, why don't we write fabulous? That's you. Think about this. What do you think is going to show up? Well, just like before, when view did load executed only once when the view loads the first time our app runs, that's when we should see fabulous. That's you in the text property of our message label. Now let's build and run. Now this message that says stop you are awesome shows up because I didn't click stop to the last time that I built and run. And so that code is still running in the simulator but I can just click stop here right now. And what's going to happen is it'll put a new version of you are awesome with all of my updates in the simulator. Now, remember when our app is running, the first thing that we get is that initially empty text attribute of message label, but we never see that because as soon as the app runs, you had load runs and we load up the text attribute with fabulous. That's you. Then when we click the button, it changes again to you are awesome. Outstanding. And since we completed all the coding at the end of this video, let's remember to go back over to Xcode, go up to source control, select commit in the lower left, make sure that we click on push to remote. Let's put in our commit message. How about section 2.3 added show message button. Then just click on commit two files and push. And we pushed up. And if we take a look over here on the left hand side, we see the blue lines went away in viewcontroller.swift and any M flags that were in the project navigator to show that we made modifications since our last commit have all gone away. Good work. You are committed. So now that you've learned a few techniques, here's a challenge to see if you can apply them on your own. And I'll show you the solution of the challenge in the next video. The challenge is this. Create a new Xcode project called Two Button Challenge. And you already know how to do part of this. It should have a show message button. And when you click on show message, it should say you are awesome. But in this app, I also want you to add another button with the title show another message. And when you click that, it should say you are great. Click show message. It should say you are awesome. Click show another message. It should say you are great. I bet you know how to do it. Give it a shot and keep at it, coder.